but this is what I call a massive scam. And this is why I make those videos that these airlines don't get away uh, misleading passengers. Today we are exposing Salam Air's business class scam who sells you that but gives you this. Besides other underwhelming aspects about the flight, I was also attacked by an intoxicated passenger while trying to save a female passenger from sexual harassment, resulting of him getting arrested at our destination in Sri Lanka. So join me today on an eventful flight from Istanbul all the way to Colombo. So guys, and here we are, beautiful good morning from Istanbul. I'm a little bit sick, as you probably can hear from my voice, but today we're gonna fly Oman's very fast budget airline. Uh, first leg in their business class, and then the second leg to Colombo in their regular economy class seat right in the back. So let's do this and let's go to Sri Lanka. When you book a flight on Salam Air, they give you the option to pick a business class seat for $52.02. Not a block middle seat, a proper dedicated business class seat. However, these are only available on their Airbus A321neos, which was originally scheduled to operate today's flight from Istanbul to Muscat. However, an A321 never showed up. Neither did a Salam Air email in my inbox informing me about an equipment change. Also, upon check-in, nobody told me. In fact, in the past two weeks, the 321 only operated once on this particular flight. Communication is the key. If you sell customers something and not once was I informed that the product I purchased isn't available on today's flight. So what do I call it? I call it misleading and a scam. However, I received my boarding pass still believing I was assigned the seat I paid for. But now, let's head to the gate. So the plane just landed in Airbus A220 Neo first leg in business class, so let's head to the gate. It was then time to board the plane and once I stepped on board, I realized that I was ripped off and the airline made an easy $50 off me. Think about how much money the airline generates using this scam on a daily basis. Outrageous how they try to get away with it, pretending this is totally normal. So and here we are, welcome on board Salam Air and what would you call this if you were sold a business class seat, it showed up on the seat map, no communication at check-in that there was an equipment change, whatever, and I will probably never get a refund, probably will not get one, but this is what I call a massive scam. Uh, they sell you something, but in the end a co complete different product uh, shows up it's just a regular seat uh, not a dedicated business class seats which they sold me online so uh, yeah um, and it was not once communicated whether through email whether at a check-in whether now with uh, the cabin crew and uh, yeah and this is why I make those videos that these airlines don't get away uh, misleading passengers Apart from the scam, this was by far the worst Airbus A220 cabin I've seen and it was beyond filthy and broken. Everything was sticky, dirty and just simply disgusting. Also the boarding music made no sense at all. Playing classical music glorifying all this nonsense? Not sure about that. We then pushed back and made our way towards the runway, which we, as you can see, entered with an hour delay. Salamir really tries very hard to tick all the boxes today, and guess what? This was only the beginning.
So we are a good uh, 45 minutes into the flight. My pre-booked meal is right in front of me. So um, let's see what it tastes like. Also on the opposite aisle, there is a deadheading crew, ex Mahana crew, Mahana, one of my favorite airlines. I'm sure you have seen my video as well. And she works for Salam Airlines, which is an off-duty uh, crew. And she saw me coughing and she saw me <laughs> sneezing. And she actually asked me if I want some hot water and some tissues. So that's very kind. She's actually performing a lot better than the on-duty crew. <laughs> We're like a bit, yeah. The meal was okay given that Salam Air is a budget airline. However, if you haven't pre-booked some food, you can purchase snacks on board. But be aware that the onboard menu hasn't been replaced in five years and is extremely sticky and filthy and you might catch some weird disease browsing the menu. So here we are inside the loo and uh, I'm not surprised that it just looks as dirty as the rest of the cabin which is also quite of a disappointment. Cleanness here on Salam Air, an absolute letdown and uh, how do I feel about this whole experience so far? I'm pretty disappointed that I wasn't given what I paid for and uh, you know equipment changes can happen all the time and that's very normal in uh, in, uh, in the aviation industry. What's not normal is that these things are not being communicated. And I wouldn't have purchased that seat if it wasn't for the 2-2 configuration that they heavily advertised when I was booking my flight. So, you know, I'm team customer, and what you did is pull up a massive scam. And uh, my job is to protect my viewers, the audience, or people who do research on Salam Air on exactly these kind of things. And uh, that's what I do here. Nothing more, nothing less. And uh, yeah, three more hours to go. And then we see what we have, or what's in store for us once we're on the ground. We then started our descent into Mascot International Airport, where I'm going to connect to my onward flight to Colombo. See you, man. Good luck, hey. You take care. Bye bye. Do you need help? No, 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 you sure? It's okay, yeah. Uh, okay. Alright, sorry, okay. Ticket. Oh, right. On Salam Air or? Yeah. Are you flying to Tehran? Yes. Nice. So, guys, and here we are. Welcome to Muscat International. What a beautiful airport! It is one of the best in the Middle East, um, but I can't say the same about Salam Air because the flight was absolutely horrendous. Um, apart from the false advertisement and the business class uh, scam, also the crew was an absolute letdown. They were bored, no passion, no nothing. The fact that the deadheading crew, uh, that lovely Iranian lady, was outperforming everyone on this flight says everything you need to know and she was really lovely she even got me a, a coffee later and she was such a sweetheart so thank you uh, very much also the cabin was in an awful awful state it was dirty it there was filth everywhere also the bathroom even the fact that the crew didn't bother to like replace the tissues and all the goods and stuff that they ran out on and in, uh, in the lavatory just says shows you what a I don't care attitude uh, they have and that's sad but yeah I uh, be heading to the gate now and let's see how that second flight is how the uh, crew is performing on that one and then I think we can uh, draw a proper conclusion whether I would recommend you to fly on Salam Air or not but generally my feeling what I got it was just like quite of a shit show to be honest and uh, and that's sad that's very sad but uh, we'll see. Um, let's give them a second chance. And here we go once again boarding Salam Air's Airbus A320neo with 180 seats in total. Once again, the plane was quite filthy, but this time around, the crew seemed a lot nicer. However, I was originally booked in the back of the plane, 
but genius me forgot his phone at the gate and the crew helped me to get it back. And while I was waiting for it at the door, the crew asked me to sit in the front section of the cabin where I remained for the rest of the flight. However, I noticed this highly intoxicated passenger who started to harass the female traveler sitting next to her and things got quite heated after a little bit. They're giving you orders. I wasn't able to film much since the cabin was dark and I was unfortunately engaged to restrain the passenger together with the crew. But at the gate, police was already waiting for us, taking him into custody. Sorry? He was fighting with his passenger. Okay, so you can take that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you need anything from my side? Yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. All right. Show me right here. What happened for the flight? He is intoxicated. He's drunk. He has too much to drink. So he harassed her. And so I took her to protect her. But he kept he keep on refusing the orders of the cabin crew. And he, uh, he was disrupting. Yeah. He's intoxicated. He has yeah, too much to drink. And he was harassing her as well. So I had to protect her. Just make sure that she gets safely. Yeah, that he's not around, okay? Thank you for your... No, 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 it's okay, that's okay. Things like this happen. I just wanted to make sure she is... Uh, she was sitting next to him. And he was harassing her. Yeah, yeah, so I had to take her away. And then this is when he started attacking me. And uh, during landing, he was ignoring the orders of the crew as well. So, everything is okay. Don't worry, everything is fine. Come with me. <laughs> no problem. So I finally made it, I'm back home, and uh, it got quite hectic on the second flight. Uh, what happened? Uh, after I left my phone at the gate, and thanks for uh, uh, the staff at the airport for finding it, I just decided to stay in the third row, uh, at the same seat I had on the first flight. And in the fourth row, I noticed a uh, Sri Lankan. Um, very intoxicated and next to him was this lady uh, fully covered in a hijab. Uh, she was Sri Lankan as well, uh, though she doesn't speak uh, Singhala. So I don't know from which region of Sri Lanka she is. Must have been some minority, but uh, she neither spoke English. However, what I noticed during the flight is how intoxicated he was and he kept on harassing her and uh, it made me feel very uncomfortable to a point where I stood up um, because nobody else was doing anything. Everybody was just like looking and not really interfering. So I asked her to come and sit with me. So I surrendered my window seat. I said, go sit down there. And I was sitting in the aisle just to make sure that he can't get to her. However, he then uh, was sitting behind me and kept on harassing her uh, and trying to talk. He was getting very loud and very vocal um, to a point that I stood up and I said, go back there um, because the way you talk to her, the way you treat her, it is unacceptable. And uh, then he got up again. And while he got up, he was like, showing me the finger and literally poked it into my face where I stood up and I had to push him down uh, because the aisle of third um, row was empty so I pushed him down there I said if you're gonna do this one more time and I'm a most peaceful uh, person I've never had any fights in school or whatever but he was just like really provoking me he was like uh, attacking me at that point and 
I just had to restrain him in this moment. Like, the no punches were thrown or anything like this. And uh, yeah, so that kept continuing. I talked to the crew. I said, um, let's get some security at the gate um, to make sure that she is safe, that she can walk from the airport, uh, from, the air, from the airplane uh, to the baggage carousel, claim her stuff and leave. And um, he started to continue um, harassing me as well. Uh, he would call me names and whatever. And the crew would be, the crew was actually very helpful and she tried uh, yeah, to calm him down, but it wouldn't work. And then we started descending. And then that's when he got up again because he was just so drunk. And at this point, I like had to push him down again because the, Considering the safety, the cabin safety of everyone, because the second we touch down, he can also like seriously injure himself uh, and other passengers. So the crew came again and they said like we threatened them, threatened him with police, um, etc. And uh, then uh, he sat down again. And from that moment, he was kind of okay. And the second we got to the gate. Um, there was law enforcement, the station manager was there as well, and uh, everybody came, they took him off board. Crew was very nice, they thanked me, so did the police, and uh, kind of like she was okay. I took her to immigration, so I made sure that she was uh, looked after, she was fine, and because I can imagine what kind of trauma you have, especially like in her culture, her religion. Um, it's like you don't really like to be touched, you don't like to be harassed, you don't like you don't like their body contact, and uh, I think she was quite traumatized, and uh, so that's it. Um, it's just important that when you see something on a flight like this, that inform the crew, let them know that somebody is being uncomfortable. Just don't look away, and that's what I didn't like uh, with the rest of the people on that flight. Nobody was saying anything. Everyone was just ignoring it, and I felt really, really sorry for her. And I think this is just a reminder for you: stand up, speak up. The crew is very happy to help. They're extremely trained, uh, the cabin crew, to handle these kind of situation. So if you see something like that, if you see that somebody is uncomfortable, um, that somebody's intoxicated go speak out and try to help wherever you can that's very important because a lot of people just look the other way because of course it's uncomfortable it's scary as well but uh, um, we have to protect those that need our help and that was very important for me so kudos and thank you to the cabin crew of Salam Air um, on that second flight they did a, an exceptional job um, very well done how they handled it and uh, I'm glad that it didn't escalate there was no blood no uh, black eyes nothing um, I'm sure she was a little bit shocked I'm okay I can handle that as well and that's how I want to end today's video don't look the other way and sometimes uh, if you see that there's unjust and somebody's uncomfortable go try help them make a difference. It's very important um, these days. That's it guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. That was quite an exciting video today, I'd say. From the business class scam to uh, um, yeah, unruly passenger. Uh, it had much more than I could handle. But uh, let me know in the comment section below whether you have been to a similar case and share your experience in the comment section below so I can learn from you. Others can learn from your experiences, but we can learn from each other how to handle these situations in the future. And uh, I hope this really, really helps. Um, other than that, check out my Patreon. Link is in the description box below. If you want to get your cool K ring, uh, K Hill key ring, want to join my WhatsApp group or have early access to my videos. Alright, guys, thank you so much for watching, and wherever you're off to, have a safe trip.